Hello and welcome back to the podcast on this Wednesday. Okay, so the passions of the flesh wage war against our souls. That's 1 Peter 2, verse 11. Uh, that's what we looked at in depth last time with Pastor John in the studio on Monday in APJ 1825. The desires of the flesh draw us away from the all-satisfying fullness of Christ. That's what we talked about there. It's big. I mean, that's a huge point. And I want to return to that text and to that verse and to the verse after it, because in them we encounter the two greatest questions faced by the universe. No joke. The universe's two greatest questions are answered here in 1 Peter 2, verses 11 and 12. There, Peter wrote, Beloved, writing to Christians, Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. These two verses answer the two most gigantic issues faced by the universe. To make the claim and to defend it, here's Pastor John in a 1994 sermon. In those two verses, two issues are seen to be massively important. In fact, I would say they are the two most important issues in the world, in the universe. They are the two issues that the whole Bible deals with throughout And one of the ways that we know that we are aliens and exiles and strangers, like verse 11 says, is that the world, by and large, does not think that they are important issues. If the world did, the newspaper would look different, television would look different, radio would sound different, university classes would sound different, advertising would be different, business would be different. But by and large, these two issues, which the Bible treats as the most important issues in the world, are non-issues in our world, which makes aliens out of us who, who get our bearings from the Bible. The two issues are these, the salvation of the human soul and the glory of the name of God. Or to put it another way, The two big issues in the Bible and in the world are how do you save the soul so that it's not destroyed and how do you glorify God so that he's not belittled? Those are the two huge issues in these two verses. Let's just get that before we even talk about any details. Verse 11, Beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers to abstain from fleshly lusts which wage war against the soul. The issue here is whether the soul is going to be so fought against that it dies, that it is lost. There are anti-soul forces in the world. I mean, the world by and large doesn't even think about its soul. But this text says... There's a war going on, and there are desires in the world that are waging war, trying to bring my soul to ruin. And if it succeeds, if the anti-soul forces win, my soul is lost. And if my soul is lost, everything is lost, and there is no recovery. Remember what Jesus said, what will it profit a man? If he gains the whole world and loses his soul, for what can a man give in exchange for his soul? Which means if the soul has been lost, there's no negotiating anymore. If the soul is lost, you don't buy it back. It's gone. If anti-soul forces win, they win. It's over. Jesus said in Luke 16 when he was talking about the rich man and Lazarus and the rich man went to Hades and Lazarus went to Abraham's lap and they were granted for a moment 
to see and commune in word. And the man in Hades said, just send him over with a drop of water. I am in torment in these flames. And Abraham said, there is a gulf here that is so big, so wide, so deep that God has ordained nobody crosses either way ever. It's over. That's an awesome reality. This is a reality that has to do with everybody. It has to do with everybody forever. And it has to do with everybody forever in huge ways that have to do with hell and heaven. And yet, there's no column in the newspaper. There's no public service announcement on the radio. There's no sound bite on television. There's no values clarification course at the university or in our schools. There's no government agency. There's not even a, a, a welfare pamphlet that gives one hint as to how to fight for our souls. The biggest issue that our souls face is a non-issue in the world. It's a non-issue. Which is why you're an alien and a stranger. They, the world order, teach us how to fight AIDS and how to fight mosquitoes and sunstroke and drunk driving and pollen and depression and rape and fire and theft and cholesterol and dandelions. But they don't teach us how to fight for our soul. Our world, you must get this, our world is passionately committed to the inconsequential. One of these days, that will not be the case. The eyes of the world will be opened and our obliviousness to what will then be seen to be so obvious will so stun the world that we will have no explanation for how we lived the way we lived in America. How the eternal condition of the human soul could be a non-issue will be absolutely inexplicable. It will boggle the mind as we stand before our judge. We're aliens. That's the first great issue. How shall the soul of man be saved and not destroyed forever and ever. That is a big issue. Here's the second one. Verse 12. Keep your behavior excellent among the Gentiles so that in the thing in which they slander you as evildoers, they may, on account of your good deeds, as they observe them, give glory to God on the day of visitation. The first issue is how... The soul shall not be lost. The second issue is how God shall not be belittled. Or to, to make it positive, how the soul shall be saved. And now how God shall be glorified. The salvation of the soul and the glory of God are the two biggest issues in the universe. And they're non-issues for most people in America. This text says, the goal of all human behavior is to be the glory of God. Isn't that an incredibly sweeping statement? The goal of all your behavior from the time you get up in the morning until you go to bed at night is to draw attention to God. That's the significance of human life. The positive significance of human life consists in our capacity to deflect attention from ourselves to God. That's the meaning of human life as God intended it to be. You see that? I'm not making that up. That's right here. Keep 
your behavior excellent so that the Gentiles might glorify God. Live, conduct yourselves, act, behave with a mind How can I direct their attention to God by the way I live? That's what life is for. We live in order to get attention for God. If we don't, if we don't live for God's glory, we become simply a little echo of a God-neglecting culture. It's a little echo. We fit in so well to this world that we can't direct anybody's attention out of the world, which is where God is. I just have the feeling that we're so afraid of being Amish, dressing wrong, riding a horse-drawn carriage, and being anti-modern or getting the wrong tie or not having a tan or that we're just so afraid of not being in step that we blend so well nobody's saying wow look at God anymore because of the church man classic John Pfeiffer it's a clip from his first Peter 2 11 and 12 sermon titled the war against the soul and the glory of God fitting title It was preached on May 22nd, 1994, and the whole thing is online, of course, at DesiringGod.org. If you have a great sermon clip like this one, share it with me, email me, give me your name, hometown, the sermon title, and the timestamp of where the clip happens in the audio, and make a note of what stands out to you. Put the word clip in the subject line of an email and send it to me at AskPastorJohn at DesiringGod.org. Our email address, AskPastorJohn at DesiringGod.org. Well, we're back on Friday to talk predestination. Uh, it's a topic that comes up a lot, as you would expect. I'm your host, Tony Ranke, and we are rejoined in studio with Pastor John uh, when we return on Friday to talk predestination. See you then.